Hello, it's a great honor to be given an opportunity to present Sigurady 2020 today. Thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Tomohiro Fukuda, and I work in research and education at Osaka University, Japan. Sigurady was the first conference I attended in 2005. This is a group photo of the Sigurady post tour, visiting Machu Picchu, which I miss. Last year, the Great Ekari and Sigurady conferences were co-organized in Port, Portugal, so I was able to meet many Sigurady members as well. We are very sorry that we will not be able to visit Medellin, Colombia this year due to COVID-19, but we will share our recent efforts online. This is the members of our laboratory. The laboratory at Osaka University is in the traditional Japanese style with two faculty members, Professor Yabuki and myself, a doctoral course, master's course, and fourth-year undergraduate student. My research area is environmental design and advanced information technology. With the aim of constructing a super smart society, I am researching the application of advanced information and communication technologies, especially XR, PR, AR, ML, Building Information Modeling, BIM, Artificial Intelligence, AI, and Internet of Things, IoT, to architecture, civil engineering, environment, and urban engineering. Our research aims to solve the problem of society by balancing theory and practice. The life cycle of a fa facility typically involves non-professionals such as local residents and citizens and professionals such as owners, architects, and managers. It is important that these various roles understand the design content presented to them, consider the various perspectives build consensus, and move the forward process forward. A variety of media and tools have been developed to communicate to others and build consensus in the process. In recent years, the process of developing facilities has become more sophisticated and complex, and the number of stakeholders has increased. As a result, there is a need for further tools that can better reflect and the thought of the participants themselves and allow them to more naturally consider what they want to know in a virtual space. VR is a term coined by Lanier, AR by Cordell, and MR by Milgram and Kishino. Diminished reality, DR, was coined by Mann in the concept of mediated reality, including AR, MR, and DR. The company I used to work for was the first in the world to use VR for industrial applications. In 1990, they launched a VR system consisting of workstations, HMDs, data globes, and arched screens for kitchen design studies. After that, real-time rendering required for VR became possible on the PC. However, as of 20 years ago, the number of polygons that could be handled was quite limited, and VR was poor represented. Can your family make a decision to buy a 30,000 US dollars kitchen after experience this kind of VR output? However, I was excited to see an environment where users could walk through on their own PC navigate to the point of view they want to see and examine the design. And I want to develop the more and more VR in the field of architecture and urbanism, which is not yet sufficient. Here is the contents I'm going to talk about. On the left is my main research topic, and on the right are the motivations and technologies covered. The first is an actual urban design project that we worked on as a joint research project between government and industry. The goal is to achieve participatory regional regeneration through the reconstruction of roads.
Sakai Minato City is a small regional city. Mizuki Shigeru Road is located on the yellow line. This photo was taken long before the first Mizuki Shigeru Road was built, when the shopping district was bustling with activity. Mizuki Shigeru, one of Japan's pioneering cartoonists, was born in this city. Mizuki Shigeru Road was built over 20 years ago in 1993. By installing bronze statues of cartoon characters drawn by Mizuki Shigeru in the street, they aimed to revitalize the shopping arcade that has been in decline. Thanks to the tireless efforts of the local community and Sakai Minato Municipal Office, the number of bronzes has increased from the first 22 to 153. Many people from all over the country began to visit this once unknown rural shopping street. Now the plush characters are fun and hospitable. More than 2 million people visit a town of 34,000 people each year. Although Mizuki Shige Road has grown steadily so far, we see some challenges. More than 20 years have passed since the road opened, and there have been studies to address the aging of the road and make it barrier free, as well as to improve its hardware to make it safer and more comfortable. The road will be reborn under the concept of creating a hospitable and entertaining road that everyone wants to visit. To achieve this, the roadway will be made one way, narrowing the roadway and widening the sidewalk significantly. The widened sidewalk creates a resting area for visitors with bronze statues loosely placed along the roadway. How will you share the overall design and details with stakeholders to build consensus? A number of bronze statues needed to be 3D models for the Mizuki Shige Road renewal study, but there are no drawings and all the shapes are unique. Using 3D modeling software to create them manually would incur a huge amount of time and cost. For this purpose, we investigated a method of 3D modeling using a technique called structure from motion, also known as photogrammetry. Let me explain structure from motion, SFM, using the buildings as an example. First of all, we take a lot of consecutive photos. From these pictures, it generates a coarse point cloud. Based on that coarse point cloud, a more detailed point cloud is generated. Generate meshes and textures from the detailed point cloud. An example of a 3D bronze statue created in SFM can be seen here. VR requires real-time rendering, creating 153 details blends bronze statues would require a large amount of data, making real-time rendering difficult. Therefore, we divided the bronze statues into different ranks and classified the level of detail to be created while managing the overall amount of data. The created 3D bronze statue was placed in the virtual street space of the renewal design. We designed a nice scene in addition to the day scene. Then, at the public event in September 2016, we presented our renewal plans of Minsky Shige Road to the public and other stakeholders in VR. Here's a part of the VR capture.
Mizukishi Road consists of prefecture roads shown in yellow and city roads shown in blue. The prefecture governor is the highest decision maker for prefecture road, and the city mayor is the highest decision maker for city roads. Different project owners often fail to coordinate their de designs with each other, resulting in gaps in environmental design. Both the prefecture governor and the mayor were presented at the event I mentioned earlier, and they watched the BR. The figure above shows the BR as it was presented at the event. At this point, you can see the difference in the design between the prefecture road and the city road, such as the difference in the color of the roadway and the sidewalk. The prefecture governor watched the BR and noticed this design gap. And after this event, we decided to align the design of the prefecture road with the design of the city road. The figure below is a final design proposal. The design of the prefecture road and the city road were unified. This is the zoomed in version of the previous diagram. These design gaps are common, not just in this project. However, many projects are carried out without the intuitive detailed tools of VR. In VR, the color of the pavement can be changed quickly. But once the environment is complete in the real world, it can't be easily changed. Experts need to work through the process during the design phase, identifying problems efficiently. Consensus buildings work on the renewal plan using VR was carried out not only for residents along the roadside, but also for the general public. BR was also used in classes at a local elementary school. The new music share load was completed in the summer of 2018 as construction progressed with BR to see the big picture. So please watch the new music share load video completed. Since our renovation, we have had over 3 million visitors in 2019. Ah. The Music Share Load Renewal Project helped the people involved understand what VR is and how useful it is. Then, in the same Sakamina city, the next project was started. This is a project to rebuild the civic center. 
The project is a new Sakai Mina Civic Center complex, which includes a hall, a library, conference rooms, a Japanese style tatami room, and welfare facility and a disaster prevention facility. It's not easy to understand the design of a 7,000 uh, 7, square meter buildings complex using drawings and perspectives from limited viewpoints. In the case of a building complex, there are multiple managers and operators for different functions and users need to be uh, diverse. The new Sakamina Civic Center complex is also planned to have multiple administrators for different functions. Also, it's planned that citizens will participate in the project and operations of the complex. Therefore, we created a VR based on the design data. In general, 3D models of a building project have a large amount of data and require PC with a high-performance GPU to run VR. As a result, the number of users who can experience VR is limited. So we made a 360-degree panorama video and uploaded it to YouTube so that more people can experience VR on their own smartphones. This YouTube movie is playing on a PC. If you play it on a smartphone, you can view it in 3D with a simple head-mount display made of paper as shown of this picture. It's a 360-degree video, so users can view it from any angle they want, orbit along the camera path. So original captions are in Japanese and have been automatically translated by YouTube. Please note that there are some strange English translations. So this is a library. So this is go back to entrance hall. the second floor lobby. Here's a cafe uh, with a good scenery. Study corners. Uh, we can see the many greeneries. So we enter the meeting room. So we skip to the Japanese style room. and 
under the hole, not the hole. We shift the next topic is the application of mixed reality to landscape simulation. Finally, we will integrate artificial intelligence. For a new landscape review, a photo montage is usually created by composing a design CG into a photograph of a current situation, but it's a still image. With video, you can change your point of view and handle moving objects at all will. How do we create this plan with ML? That is interactive and real-time video montage. Methodology. This is an old building in its current state. The plan is to demolish these buildings and build a new structure. First, mask the area of the build, all the buildings. Next, the area is filled with a pure green color that doesn't exist in reality. Next, the field area is made transparent and instead the visible background is painted. Then the new structure is drawn in the appropriate place. However, in this state, the relationship between the structure and the trees in the foreground is not correct. So then the background area of the vegetation is extracted and painted at the end. These processes need to be automatic and fast. To achieve this, the current structure is virtually erased and the new 3D model is synthesized. In, order, in other words, we are dealing with both diminished reality and augmented reality. We will refer to this as mixed reality. We have been developing ML step-by-step step over the last few years to make this happen. As elementary technologies, we have applied game engines, image processing, structure from motion, and most recently deep learning. Let me explain them in order. This diagram shows the definition of the 3D models in the game engine. The green buildings in the center is a mask model for virtual elasure. The newly constructed building is modulated in BIM software and imported into the game engine. The background model and the occlusion model, such as trees, were created in advance by SFM. This is an explanation of the mask processing in the case of offline movie. Except, except for the person to be composited by CG, it is taken as a green background. Then the persons are combined with another CG except for the green color. Here is the result at 2018. The red, blue, and yellow lines in the current video shows the tracking reference points of ML. The value at the top right shows the current and planned green view index. This system enables us to examine the current status, the future landscape after the new construction. Extracted images of green areas by image processing and estimated green view index at the same time. However, challenges remain. Occlusion to objects that appear suddenly during a MAU, such as moving people, cars, trees, cannot be handled dynamically and green path extraction. Currently, it only extracts the green color and doesn't extract the tree trunk and the branches. Can't we recognize the tree as an object? 
Therefore, we came up with the idea of incorporating AI deep learning into ML. This system extracts masks and virtually eliminates moving people and cars that suddenly appear in real time while ML is running. The upper left is the current live video and the lower left is a masked video. Buildings that do not move during ML are predefined by SFM. Moving people are masked in real time by deep learning object detection. The right is a DR output in which uh, motionless buildings and a moving person are simultaneously and virtually deleted. In this step, the people objects are extracted as a rectangle. As a next step, we adopted a semantic segmentation technique of deep learning to handle occlusion dynamically in outdoor ML simulation. Semantic segmentation can extract each object region frame by frame. Thus, dynamic occlusion handling can be realized using this technique. Real-time semantic segmentation involves heavy processing and thus requires a high-end desktop computer. However, a proposed system is to be used for landscape simulation outdoors, so it needs to be used on a mobile device. We therefore developed a system in which a client device transfers image frames to a server, which performs semantic segmentation processing on those frames and sends process frame back to the client. This figure shows the communication flow of the live video and segmentation video between the client server in our proposed system. To realize the client server communication over the internet, WebRTC that enables web applications and sites to capture and optionally stream video media between browsers in real time was adopted. Regarding dynamic occlusion handling, a mask image of occlusion targets is created with RGBD value in a segmentation image. It was merged into a ML image that is rendered a 3D model and an ML layer with occlusion handling is created in real time. This system also estimates the Greenview index GBI of the present and the proposed landscape with ML simultaneously in real time. The GBI of the present landscape is estimated by creating a mask image of a green area with a segmentation image. The GBI of the proposed landscape is estimated by the combination of a mask image of the current green area and a mask image of 3D models of planting. Then, planting models are given attribute information to create a mask image of only planting models. A proposed ML-based landscape simulation was conducted to evaluate the dynamic occlusion handling. This figure shows the setup of a new buildings and the camera's position and orientation. The viewpoint was set on the fourth floor of the buildings in Osaka University. Vegetation and fence were defined as occlusion target. The webcam was panned for 10 seconds, then tilted up for 10 seconds. Internet communication speed is shown in the table. The result showed that the developed system can transfer the webcam frames to the server computer with video communication over the internet based on WebRTC and server computer implemented semantic segmentation processing on every frame and set it to the client. Then dynamic occlusion handling was realized. The top left is a live video of the current situation and the middle left is a segmentation video. In this case, the video is categorized into sky, buildings, vegetations, and fences. The bottom left is a masked video that defines vegetations and fences. These are defined as being in front of the 3D virtual model. On the right is an ML output of a real world tree and fence that has been occluded through these processes. 
This dynamic occlusion handling helps to conduct more appropriate ML-based landscape simulation. In contrast, the processing speed was about five frames per second. Regarding the outdoor AR experiment, here is an outdoor AR project that are currently underway. First, the picture is Amano Hashirate, one of the three most scenic spots in Japan. It is a 3.6 kilometers long, 20 to 170 meters wide sandbar formed by white sandy beaches and 5,000 blue pine trees. Although 1,280 years ago, a temple called Kokubunji was built here. Seshu, the artist at that time, painted the five-story pagoda that is said to have existed about 680 years ago. The five-story pagoda has been recreated in AR for the purpose of tourism of urban development this year. Users can experience AR from the distance of the 50 meters from the site using their own smartphones web browser. Since users can experience at, the, at night, one of the themes of this project is a fusion of real and virtual lighting design by collaborating with a lighting designer. Please watch the trailer for the Tango Kokubunji 5 Solid Pagoda AR. The user scans the QR code and press a button that aligns with the position of the cornerstone and the AR starts with a 3D art installation of the five-story pagoda, accompanied by background music. This is a day daytime scene when real people enter, the sense of the realism is enhanced. You can also get a sense of the scale of the 40 meters tall five-story pagoda. At night, the surrounding facilities are lit up. This is a museum and an old house. The air experience square is lit low. AR users hold up their smartphones for the experience. Since it is not currently possible to capture AR movies, here are some screenshots. This is AR screenshot with a full moon. And this is a AR screenshot along with fireworks and a full moon. When the movement of the real world enters the air world, the realism is enhanced. The sunrise and five-story pagoda. This scene was newly discovered on site. Experiences it locally is a new inspiration. The next topic is integration of architecture planning and environment using XR in the early design phase. This is the detached house project in collaboration with an architect in 2014. The site is about 400 square meters and the total floor area of the two-story buildings is about 135 square meters. The features of special planning in the, this project were triple nested. In detail, the living room was placed as an open seating space in the center of the house. 
the cross tier like corridor went around the living room and the kitchen bath and stairs to the second floor were placed in the out, outermost layer. One of the challenges in an optimal thermal environment of the living room had to be achieved. This room had an open ceiling space, which connect with some rooms on the first floor and with some rooms and stairs on the second floor. Therefore, we performed the CFD calculations and simulated the thermal environment for the design study. Then we defined local and orientation and materials such as wall, roof, flooring, glass door and door, and heatings and ventilatings and air conditioning. Then we also defined air conditioning product and simulation period, like this video. CFD simulation, the initial plan was conducted regarding summer and winter conditions. As a result, it was found that in winter, warm air from the air conditioning rose in the open ceiling space and the occurrence of the downdraft was revealed on the stairs. To solve this issue, a mobile sliding door at the foot of the stairs was designed and CFD analysis was carried out again. Then the downdraft that occurred on the stairs was suppressed and the thermal environment was improved. For this, the movable door was closed only when the heating was used. When the door was opened, the corridor space design remained attractive since the, this door was hidden behind the wall. The detached house was finally completed in 2015. This is a panorama image of open ceiling living room. By arranging the result of the CFD simulations in the VR, the summer environment was visualized using arrows meaning wind direction and a color map meaning temperature that is easier for the client to understand the air flow than that in CFD software. Meanwhile, a new problem was found in that it was impossible to export the arrows and the color map information as vector data. Therefore, the images to be texture mapped were output as raster data in this study. Therefore, we developed a new workflow that integrates BIM, CFD, and VR to display the result of CFD calculations in VR as they are. In this VR capture, a user wears an HMD and operate VR environment with a game controller while examining a thermal environment and airflow in the room. This is a thermal environment simulation of my office on the left. The simulation result on the right shows that window glass and such specifications have been changed. You can see that the thermal environment has been improved. Next, ML allows us to visualize current thermal environment simulations and conduct renovation design studies on site. Then we have modified the previous workflow for ML. We use HoloLens version one as an optical see-through HMD. The video above shows the experience of a user wearing the HoloLens and the video below shows the CFD result as seen by the ML user. The CFD animation is a loop. The streamlines are representative of the airflow with red indicating warmer temperatures and the blue indicating cooler temperatures. It also shows a thermal simulation of a room divided by two new partition walls. The real space and the virtual models of partitions and the CFD simulation results are corresponding to the occlusion. Small, 
it uses voice recognition as an interface. When the CFD results are displayed at full scale, it's easy to intuitively understand the thermal environment, but it's difficult to understand the whole picture of the room. So if the user says small, it will be displayed on the reduced scale, just like Big. a physical model. You can also use voice recognition to switch Change. between the current state and proposed design. This is another application of VDR, which is a virtual erasure of a red wall for renovation study. The representation of the next room, as seen after the DR simulation, is represented in live video using 360-degree live streaming instead of creating a 3D model in SFM in advance. The movie on the left is a scene that the user sees see through the HMD HoloLens and the movie on the right is real-world view. The MR user can see the walls being virtually erased and the next room as if they were looking through a live streamed perspective. Occlusion between the real and virtual world is also achieved, although it affects the accuracy of the meshes HoloLens generates. However, we found that device bandwidth is not enough to support this high resolution streaming data volume. So the background refresh is temporarily changed to manual. On another XR topic, in 2006, I came across a physical exhibition called Future Meeting Style at the Venice Biennale in Italy. The, I, the idea was that some attendees would participate face-to-face -face while others would join the meeting online. This year, due to COVID-19, this kind of meeting style is not uncommon. I'm trying to figure out how to share the 3D information needed for architectural design online. Therefore, we developed a cloud-based VR that allows users to review designs while sharing the 3D virtual space online. You can not only share 3D models, but also draw sketches in the 3D virtual space. This kind of system for sharing 3D digital models is now commonplace in BIM and VR field. We proposed the 3D remote sharing system of the real object using high-speed point cloud on mixed reality. Our system generates both standard and the city models as high-speed point cloud using RGB data. A receiver who is in a remote place wore the tolerance to participate sender's presentation while handling 3D models. Because the city model put on the desk, Another desk was also placed beside the receiver. Positions were aligned as if the scale model was on this desk. On the left is an image of you, uh, the sender captured by Kinect and RDBD camera. And on the right is a high-speed point cloud imported in the game engine. This is a view from MR user. The receiver could uh, freely move about in the meeting room and understand sender's movement and the scale model by high-speed point cloud. When the receiver moves, the appearance of the sender and the scale model changes from the receiver viewpoint in real time, which is impossible by 2D display such as video conference system. However, the high-speed point cloud was transferred
So then uh, we try to develop the new system. This is the overview of our proposed system. At first, point cloud data of a sender and the physical object is captured by an RGBD camera and segmented in a server PC in site A. And next, point cloud data is transferred to site B, Fear Lang, uh, with the world anchor, which is a reference point of the real world. Then receivers can see point cloud object through their ML HMD at the same position if one user manipulates them thanks to the world anchor. We evaluated the usability of the prototype system by multiple users, three participants in total, one sender and two receivers, two separated rooms under the same local area network environment. Below figure shows the position of participants. This video shows the two receivers view through HoloLens. Now the sender is appeared as a point cloud object. He was moving, so the point cloud was also moving. And also the physical object is appeared. As you can see, receiver A and B could see the point cloud object at the same position in real time. And this video shows the result of manipulating point cloud objects by receivers. Now, receiver B is manipulating a point cloud object. As you can see, the result of the manipulation by a receiver could reflect another receiver's view in real time. So this is the last topic. I'm going to talk about automatic generation of building mask images by using a 3D model with photographs for deep learning. We are currently working on creating mask images of horizontal surfaces, such as the roofs of buildings using aerial photographs. Information extracted from photographs is used widely in urban planning. For example, about building location and exterior, green coverage ratio and sky view factor and so on. The necessity of checking a lot of photographs quickly is increased. Segmentation method by using deep learning are developed. It is effective to detect buildings on photographs using segmentation for understanding the current situation. Specific target string data is not prepared. We have to prepare many mask images like this. In many cases, these images are generated manually. It is labor intensive. It has time demanding. Therefore, automatic generation system of mask images is necessary. Before starting this project, we explored the new road for VR. In particular, we proposed rendering methods that consist of post-processing rendering, segmentation rendering, and shadow casting rendering for more basalite approaches in the use of 3D data. We focus on the creation of a data set of annotated images composed of paired foreground, background, and semantic relevant images in addition to traditional immersive rendering for training deep learning neural networks and analyzing landscapes. Using a 3D virtual model within a VR space makes it easy to change parameters such as the position and orientation of the virtual camera and the properties of objects, thereby making it possible to readily, automatically and rapidly create a large amount of image data for learning, provided that accuracy of 3D model is sufficient. So the objective of this research is to develop automatic generation system of building mask images for deep learning. To use this system, we can create data sets include mask images easily and rapidly. I will show you the 
conceptual diagram. First, we create 3D model with aerial photographs. Input 3D model into our proposed system. In this system, the 3D models are classified into building mass classes and others class. A proposed system output data set that is set of aerial photographs and mask images automatically. Next, the methodology to output data set. In the game engine, we define the camera object to take images on the 3D model and show the others class of the 3D models. Take the images from the above the model. This image is one aerial photograph, then the change the class, show only buildings mass class of the 3D models. Take the images same as before. This image is one mask image. These two images is pair of the data set. Then change the class again. After that, the coordinates of the camera object are changed. Then repeat these processes. To switch the class, building mask and others, and take the images from the same camera point, we can get the pairs of aerial photographs and mask images. The camera move on the 3D model, take many images. So this system output a lot of sets of aerial photographs and mask images in short time in comparison to manually generating. These are generated mask images. Left side is aerial photographs. Center is automatically generated mask images. These are generated by our proposed system. Right side is manually generated mask images. They are made by us manually. It takes very long time. These two mask images are almost same. These are buildings detection results. We train the model by using automatically generated data sets and detect buildings on automatically generated photographs, which are not used to train the model. These are prediction result. And uh, next are truth masks. We calculated IOU. IOU is one of the metrics that evaluate how similar predicted area to the ground truth areas. IOU is 0 0.622. The model recognized the buildings to some extent. This is the final slide. Sigurdi 2020 conference theme, transformative design matches recent design research and the practice trends and include a wide variety of aspects towards the fourth industrial revolutionary society. Computer-aided architectural design technologies are growing up and become more friendly for architects, designers, and engineers due to easier to implementation. New developed methods and applications will bring transformative changes in architectural, engineering, and construction field. I appreciate all those who have joined the researches and Sigladi 2020, all the participants and hosts. Thank you for listening.